Welcome to the show. This is Andre with Yup. I said it, guys. If you are new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification uh, so that you can get all the latest videos. I would really appreciate that. I mean, it helps in the algorithm. This channel is growing. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. That's my goal, but I know I got to cross a couple of uh, milestones to get there. You guys can help me by just, it's free. Just hit the bell notification, like, like, share, subscribe. I don't post that much, not yet. If you want me to, I will. Uh, but, you know, I, I have a, you know, I got a pretty good following here, but we like to keep this thing going. So, look, I, I don't know if you know Michael Knowles. Michael Knowles, uh, very good uh, YouTube influencer. He's got a he's got a, a episode right now uh, on Dr. Fauci that's really awesome. I was just checking that out yesterday. But right here on Pierce Morgan, uh, I'm back and forth on Pierce Morgan because he's back and forth, you know, I, you know. But uh, this particular episode here is absolutely telling. I don't know what else to say about it. People are starting to wake up and we're starting to see a revolt against the tyrannical government. Can you see that? Tyrannical. Yeah, you see that shirt? Uh, but, you know, there's a revolt right now uh, where people are using the information and we're clapping back. All right. We're, just, we're not just going to lay down and take the whipping. Uh, it's never going to happen. So here's a perfect example of some clapping back. When Michael knows has to school the living daylights out of this girl. But she's a well-known name, obviously. She's on the Pierce Morgan show. And I just want you to see how they openly, they, first of all, don't know what they're talking about ever. Uh, they don't do any research. So all we have to do is a quick Google search, really, <laughs> on Chap GPT, And we won. We beat him. <laughs> but take a look at this clip because it's absolutely amazing uh, and it's just it's just a breath of fresh air whenever you see the hypocrisy being exposed. This is why President Biden the other day when he was walking out of a press briefing was asked, Mr. President, Donald Trump says that you are imprisoning him because he's your political rival. What do you say to that charge? Well, we have the, we actually, walking. I'll stop you there. We have the clip. Let's play the clip. Mr. President, can you tell us, sir, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? Dun, dun, dun. Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? I mean, you look We'd like Jack, your... Jack Nicholson in The Shining at the end of that. But um, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, Michael, to pick up your point there, that's the clip you're referring to. Yes, and it's pretty clear this is not a man who thinks that he has to be accountable to the American people. When you look at the federal charge against Trump, there was a poll that came out when that charge was brought that showed 62% of Americans think that it's primarily politically motivated. They just don't seem to care. And so this has been a ratcheting up, as we've all noted on the panel, of trends that have been built up for some years now. Some would say going back to Richard Nixon. But certainly in the early Trump campaign, the Democrats tried to stop him from being president by spying on him and cooking up fake intelligence, ironically enough, with Russia. And that didn't work. Then they tried to throw him out by impeaching him twice. That didn't work. Then they tried to kick him out by rigging the election and changing all the voter rules, in some cases, in contravention of state constitutions leading up to that election. That did get him out of office, and he did leave office, but then he didn't go away. He kept running again. So then they indicted him four times. Now they've convicted him. They're going to threaten to throw him in prison. Pretty soon they're going to threaten to send him to St. Helena. But this has absolutely nothing to do with the law. As was noted earlier, at most you're talking about a, a misdemeanor that would have already expired under the statute of limitations. I'm not even convinced that there was really a misdemeanor that Trump committed. So my fellow panelist here is celebrating that, that the rule of law has has been vindicated and overturned 234 years of American legal tradition, I would challenge her to see if she could possibly articulate how and what crime Trump committed, because so far Alvin Bragg, the DA, has failed to do so. The, the judge in the case, Judge Marchand, has failed to do so. And they can't do it because Trump didn't commit any of the crimes for which he's been convicted. Well, let's just ask quickly before I... Bingo. <laughs> All 100% facts. And she's shaking her head. She's like, no, they never spied on Trump. What is he talking about? They didn't weaponize the justice system against him. Uh, yes, they did. A monkey could see it. This is very clear. <laughs> okay. Anybody in denial, uh, you know, it, it just, you know, if you got some brain cells left and you ain't smoked the living crap out of them with a uh, crack, uh, then you know. Uh, that this has all been weaponized. Duh. <laughs> she, she looked confused. What's she going to say? So they want to ask her, they're asking her, what was the crime? Articulate the crime to us, madam. We go to Kevin. Francesca, just on that point, what crime did Trump commit? 
he it was it was camp it was financial crimes it was white collar crimes it was it, what that was is it? exactly Which what one, they though? charged him it was he was convicted on what was the crime it's new york state law i understand they, what's the it, what was the crime it is new Francesca, I gotta, I, actually, I don't even like that, it. It is well, hang literally on, hang on, he just on. got convicted on thirty-four <laughs> counts. Francesca, what of, was the of, crime? Act, of like cooking the actual books. What was the crime? Cooking you the books. You are not allowed. <laughs> so you are not allowed to to use your own financial, like your own money, to pay off somebody, and then he wrote he he logged it as something different. He logged. Fonny Willis, I'm pretty sure, did the same exact thing that they're accusing Trump of. Except she didn't log anything because she kept the money under her mattress, remember? <laughs> it as just a regular payment, but he was actually paying off this porn star to keep quiet, which, if he hadn't been running for president, would not have mattered, but he was. And so it impacted campaign finance laws in New York State. Okay, that is what Juan Merchan just oversaw this. Okay. Alvin Bragg okay. brought these charges that's, because that's Michael not, Cohen that's not quite was what already okay. sentenced okay. to... Meanwhile, Hunter Biden smoking crack on a laptop, sleeping with underage girls. That's just what's on the laptop, I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lying on gun applications uh, when his dad is uh, anti-2A. You know, it's crazy. Did she talk about any of that? Look at her. She has lost her head. Oh, my goodness. Three years okay, to do it. Okay, let's just go before Kevin. I'll be very, very, very patient. But I will I'm come no, to you. Look, I'm no expert. Let me just say, hang on. No, no, Michael, you are no expert. By That's the way, because the campaign finance wait, 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 law is a wait, federal wait. law. Hang on, anyway, Francesca. Yeah. I want to go to Mark. You're the lawyer. Is anything Francesca just said is that actually the crime? Look, let me just say I like Francesca a lot, I was, and we probably agree on eighty <laughs> percent of our worldviews. However, Francesca, that. That what the way you just described it, call me afterwards and I'll educate you because that's not what happened. There was no theory that was given to the to the jurors. The jurors were told it could have been campaign finance, it could have been tax, it could have been false books. They were told they didn't have to specify and specifically told they did not have to agree unanimously. That's what irks me. Lifelong Democrat, no fan of Trump, never voted for Trump, never will. But I will tell you, as somebody who has spent his entire career with kind of taking on unpopular causes and holding the government accountable, um, I have to tell you, I do that for a reason. And it, the reason is this kind of shenanigans, and that's the best light I can spin it, on in, in the criminal courts has no place in a federal election. No, the, I agree. the campaign finance but, laws but, but, were federal, not state, and the state laws had nothing to okay, do with it. Okay, I want to go, I want to go. Smoke. <laughs> go rewind that back so you can listen. He's a never, ever, ever Trumper, okay? He, he's a lifelong Democrat, okay? That's what Pierce Morgan's got on the show, and he's right, okay? You, he gave the jury so many options on what they could and couldn't do. This, it was rigged, okay? All right, it's no other way around it, bro. It's just no other way to look at this, period. No matter what side you're on, it no matter, okay? It, it was absolutely rigged. Hey, Trump ain't done nothing wrong. Period. Ain't done nothing wrong. In my eyes, in my opinion, Trump ain't done nothing wrong. The real criminals are opening the borders. The real criminals are letting cartel members in. Uh, the real criminals are funding wars. Okay? Never ending wars. Does Francesca know anything about that? She probably doesn't care. My guess. Hang on. I want to go to Kevin. Be waiting very patiently. Kevin. You are a very successful businessman, as Trump has obviously been in his career too. Do you think, in all honesty, if you were caught up in something like this, and I'm not for a moment suggesting you would want to have a one-night stand with Stormy Daniels, but if you went down this road and ran for office, or not run for office, if you just ran for, say, to be CEO of a company, do you think it would ever have led to a criminal case? Because the argument is that a regular business guy who's not actually running for the presidency uh, would be treated very differently. And therefore, the law has not been seen to be fairly applied here. I think half the country in the U.S. believes this is politically motivated, which is not a good thing. It's having more impact on the state of New York, which is seen as unstable. Whether the case um, has flaws in it or not will be... Uh, 
solved for in the appellate system. So most people assume because of the importance of the situation that it will go through the appellate system as quickly as possible, if necessary, to the Supreme Court. In the end of the day, these things balance themselves. The damage done to New York started back in the other litigation around real estate. Quietly, large projects, those are over a billion, uh, are not being started in New York currently. People are waiting um, until things stabilize. And I've, I've moved. Yeah, does Francesca understand what he's talking about? Because he's talking about a lot of money being missed out, a lot of opportunities being missed out in New York City uh, because of this ruling uh, of this real estate case uh, against uh, uh, Trump uh, coming from Letitia James. OK, so in other words, like a lot of uh, multimillionaire, billionaire figures don't want to do. Uh, real estate deals and business in New York because of the ruling, uh, which is sort of a no-brainer. Okay, I wouldn't do business there either. I wouldn't uh, build new construction there either. If you're going to start this uh, law, if you're going to start this lawfare against a person uh, legitimately doing um, uh, business in real estate. Now, the, our friends on the left think that they were crazy for saying that, but guess what? Uh, the, the company that loaned Trump the money wants to do more business with him again. Donald Trump's been successful in real estate for many years. I don't care what the left is saying, okay? They, they, they are responsible for building many great uh, structures in New York. But now they've destroyed the businesses. And this is very clear. It doesn't matter what side you're on. You can see the effect of that. And, you know, people think it's just because we're wanting to vote for Trump. No, it actually has a lot to do with your next move, what you're going to actually do. And this could make or break New York. So uh, is she really concerned about any of that? I think not, really. Projects out of New York to places like Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, Montana, Pennsylvania, much more stable environments. It's too difficult to work in, in that unstable environment. And the real problem is, you can't raise institutional capital right now. The, the capital from around the world thinks New York's a little off kilter. Now, something else to consider about uh, Alvin Bragg, uh, which I think history will prove to be correct. You've got to remember, uh, Donald Trump only 24 months ago, in the middle of the first term of Biden, did not have control of his party. About a third of them were... Um, rebelling, if you want to use that word, because they were concerned about the controversy around Trump and they were looking for new leadership. And he was challenged. But something happened that changed everything. And this is the law of unintended, unintended consequences. Alvin Bragg started charging Trump. Mm -hmm. And immediately the entire Republican Party coalesced behind him almost in 48 hours. Of course, the country bifurcated into this being a political witch hunt using lawfare. Um, you know, as, as a tool, and we're still debating that. But here's what's really interesting. If Trump becomes president, I think he has a big debt to Alvin Bragg. Right. Alvin Bragg is the kingmaker. Yeah. He made Trump <laughs> president by polarizing the country so much and motivating the base so much that in the last 42 hours, Trump has passed $60 million in fundraising. That's an all-time record for him. So what's happening here is this <laughs> unusual mad. time. And I understand oh that you may goodness. not like that as an unintended consequence if you're Alvin Bragg. Oh, well. But I think history will show he made Donald Trump president one more time. I completely, and that's just the way it is. Uh, you know what? I completely agree. I think yes. it's <laughs> Amazing, right? Amazing, the hypocrisy of the left. They're crazy. They're absolutely nuts. But we're going to win. We're going to win absolutely big. And they can't stop the train. They, they literally can't stop it. Too big to rig. All right. Too big to rig. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Overdoing it. You got to overdo it sometimes. So people, you, you, got, you got strength. You got to show your strength to people because they just don't get it. They'll ruin the entire market. They'll ruin everything because they don't like somebody. And that's not the way we do it here. All right? Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. We're going to smoke them, right? Absolutely. Like, share, subscribe. Go ahead and hit the bell notification. We love you.